Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark with the Mad Movie Mark movie review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1955 religious drama or debt. Well, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna be shaking anything up here, but I'm reviewing every movie that has 100 percent brush rain or rotten tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of one to ten. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1920s silent movie era, and now I'm at 1955 with Ordette. This movie has 100% fresh rating from the critics and a 91% fresh rating from the audience. It was also featured on the most recent sight and sound poll, which ranks the 100 greatest movies ever made, and it was number 48 on that poll. Uh, so this movie is a religious drama. This movie revolves around a family, the head of the family, the grandfather slash father. His name is Morton. He has three sons. Their names are Mikkel, Johannes, and Anders. Mikkel has no faith in religion. Uh, he does not believe in religion at all, but his wife, Inger, believes in the same religion that her father does. Men Mikkel, du tror det på Gud, gør du ikke? Du ved, Inger, hvad jeg mener om de ting. Er du ikke har troen? Ikke engang troen på troen. His other son, Johannes, believes that he is Jesus Christ. Vi and his son Anders uh, also believes in religion, but he is in love with a woman who has a different religion than him. So we get the feeling that he is okay with giving up his religion to be with this girl, uh, but we're not entirely sure. So uh, this movie, basically, when we start this movie, we are introduced to Morton. Now Morton is, uh, when we first meet him, he really has no personality at all. Uh, he's kind of somber all the time. This is what we get a lot of in the beginning. So they do a really fast job at, saying, at telling everyone that Johannes is crazy. And they really hammer this fact forward uh, right in the beginning. There's, there's a lot of conversation about how Johannes is crazy. Uh, and the beginning of this movie, I will admit, is really slow, but thankfully, Morton uh, breaks out his jazz saxophone and gives us all a nice viewing of his musical talents. Oh, wait, that's... Wait, that's just a pipe. Never mind. That's not a jazz saxophone. It's still a slow movie, so my mistake. Uh, so um, the movie is really slow in the beginning. Morton is, like I said, he's just stoic. He's almost robotic. He just kind of like sits in his chair and thinks a lot. So when this movie picks up, we learn that Anders is in love with the girl next door. Now she and her family have a different religion than what Anders and his family believe in. And this is, I believe in Denmark. Uh, during that time, it would appear that if your family has a different religion than the other family, especially when both families are extremely religious, that it's not okay for you to intermarry between these religions. Uh, so, um, Anders' father does not want him marrying Anne, and Anne's father does not want her marrying Anders. So Anders goes next door, and he decides that he's going to have a talk with, uh, Anne's, with Anne's father. So he has a talk with Anne's father. The talk doesn't go very well. It doesn't go that far because um, he, Anne's father just turns him down right away and says that you can't marry her because you're of a, a different religion and it's never going to work. So I'm sorry, but she's going to marry within her own religion. So he goes home and he's a bit down the dumps and he tells his uh, grandfather, he tells Morton and he tells Mikkel, he tells everyone that uh, he was denied because of his religion. Now, Morton, who does, didn't want his son to marry Anne, he takes a lot of offense to this and he is more offended by this. Uh, he cares more about how much he's offended than about his his son marrying her. Han sagde nej, far. Han sagde nej. Hvad er du siger? Han sagde nej. Hvem sagde nej? 
his Gaia. So he goes over there and he talks to uh, Anne's father and he says, hey, look, is there any way that we can make this happen? Uh, I know we have different religions, but, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, why don't we why don't we have them get together? And Anne's father says, definitely not. How about this? Why don't you change your religion? If you decide to change your religion, then we could talk about it. So. Uh, this is a non-starter for Anders' father. He says, I'm not going to do this. Like, uh, there's no reason why we should, we should change our religion. And then he, uh, Anne's father gets a phone call at his house. And the phone call is saying that uh, they need to talk to Morton because Morton's daughter is extremely ill. Now, Morton's daughter is, uh, Inger is, is his daughter because uh, she's married to Mikkel. Um, she is pregnant with their third baby, but the pregnancy is going bad. She's in labor and the labor is going terribly. Uh, so they believe that either the baby is going to die or Inger is going to die. Now, when Anne's father gets this news, he says, oh by God, this is, this is God talking to us. It's telling us that you have the wrong religion. So uh, I hope that, you know, uh, Inger and the baby go to heaven because then that'll show, that'll open everyone's eyes and it will show you that you need to believe in God the way I do, or whatever. <laughs> now, um, Morton takes even more offense to this and he's very, you know, emotional because of what's going on with his daughter and what could be going on with his granddaughter. And he, you know, he gets very upset and he leaves. When he gets home, he learns that the uh, baby has passed away. The baby hasn't lived. And Inger is clutching on to, to life. She might not make it. We're not sure. Uh, so, of course, Johannes goes in there and he's talking to uh, one of Inger and Morton's younger children and he says that uh, uh, she's going to die tonight because you guys do not believe in me as the savior. You guys don't have enough belief in me. If you guys only believed in me then this wouldn't have happened and I could have saved Inger and everything could have been fine but because you guys uh, you guys believe in God, that God exists, but for some reason you can't believe that uh, I am him. <laughs> so your belief doesn't go far enough, so Inger's gonna die, basically, is what they say. Um, the doctor comes out of the room and says Inger's actually going to live, that things are fine, that uh, she's just, you know, she was barely holding on, but she's gonna survive the night and she's gonna be fine. So uh, the doctor goes home, and then shortly after the doctor go home, goes home, Inger passes away. Now, Johannes, uh, uh, well, first of all, Mikkel, who has no faith, is very distraught and upset by this. Now, Morton and the family, they say, well, you know, this is God's plan. This is what God wanted. There's a reason for this. So some good is going to come of this. And Mikkel is grief-stricken, and he basically says, like, we're just going to put her in the ground, and now she's uh, she has nothingness there's nothing after nothing after death uh she just everything ceases to exist and now she's just uh she's just in this nothingness um so you know definitely a stark contrast of religion here um so as they're kind of having their competing views Mikkel is very emotional and upset uh and i think this movie is trying to show that he is more emotional and more, uh, you know, distressed by this because he doesn't have faith. That was my, uh, that's what I got from this in the movie, but who knows? Uh, so while this is going on, uh, Johannes goes in the room and he tries to, you know, uh, he tries to revive Inger. He tries to bring her back from the from the dead uh, to resurrect her from the dead, and it doesn't happen. And he like collapses almost, and he falls ill and then he leaves and no one sees him uh, for a while uh, so they're having the funeral for Inger and everyone's upset distraught of course Mikkel is more distraught than anyone because he doesn't have the faith he uh, he's just so worried that his wife is 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 nowhere that she has no soul she has no nothing went to heaven and it's just nothing uh, and then Johannes comes in and Johannes is talking to the girl who's there again and he says to the girl, do you, do you believe in me? Do you have faith? Um, 
but at this point, he says he's cured, that he no longer believes that he's Jesus. Uh, but now he still thinks that he can resurrect anger, that he can talk to Jesus, and Jesus can give him the words to speak that will resurrect anger, and uh, as long as people believe. So this little girl says that she believes, and he says a bunch of words, and then, uh, wouldn't you know it, Inga rises from the dead, and she's alive now. <laughs> and Mikkel says he has his faith back and that they're going to uh, keep trying to continue down this family and everything's great and the two fathers you know they're friends now they want anders to marry Anne, and uh you know everything's tied up in a nice neat little package here so that's the entire movie uh so what do i think about this movie well uh eh, i'm not a huge fan of this movie it's not because it really kind of like hammers religion at you and um, yeah, there's a lot of religious overtones and undertones in this movie. That's fine. I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of movies that do that and it doesn't necessarily bother me. The, the thing I don't like about this movie really is its pacing. It is incredibly slow, like painfully slow uh, in the beginning where uh, Morton is just looking like he's just looking down the dumps all the time and he's just looking like he's stoic and depressed for no reason like I don't know why they start him out looking like this uh I don't know if it's because he's so like just mentally anguished and exhausted by Johannes uh, acting crazy or if it's because he has to deal with Mikkel's uh, constant lack of faith and it's just totally bottling up and tormenting him inside so he has like no will no energy no like drive to live in this world i don't know that's possible i i mean it, there's re there's a, there's evidence to support this because he does worry about johannes he does fret about Johannes and his mental state and how Johannes is probably going to live with him the rest of his life because he he can't uh, function on his own. So possibility, and he also has to deal with Mikkel uh, constantly talking to him about how religious religion isn't real and how God isn't real. So maybe maybe that's the reason uh, he's always fretting and looking like he's down in the dumps. But I don't know because they don't specifically tell you. So I might just be reaching a little bit too far here. But even with that, the pacing in this movie, in the in the beginning especially, the pacing of this movie is incredibly slow. Uh, in the in the end, in the later parts of the movie, it does pick up a little. There is a little bit more action and stuff happening uh, here and there. Uh, I also, honestly, whenever Johannes came out and started talking, uh, you know, he would just walk into a room, stare like at at whatever, stare at the wall, and <laughs> start talking uh, religious things. Uh, I, some of it maybe foreshadows what's going on, but uh, I was just totally taken out of the movie whenever he, he was on screen because, uh, and then, you know, because I, I know at the end of the movie, there, he's gonna, there's gonna be something that involves him because they really hammer away in the beginning how he's crazy and how he can't be cured and how nothing can be done from him. And so you have to believe that they're not going to keep harping on this and then have no payoff with it at the end. So at the end of the movie, when I realized that Anne is having complications with her, um, with her pregnancy and that she has passed away, my thinking was, oh man, are they going to have him resurrect her or something? And then at the end they do. So I don't know if this was supposed to be a, a t plot twist at the end of the movie, but I think it's really easy to see that this is coming from all directions, that this is going to happen. Uh, and the fact that the movie is slow paced and that they are, maybe they are trying to throw a curveball at you, but you can actually figure the curveball out way ahead of time, uh, just makes it so that there's, I'm not like, I'm not looking forward to anything in this movie. I know what's going to happen. I know that uh, I have a feeling that Anne and Anders are going to end up together because uh, as the relationship of these two dads pro are progressing through the movie, they realize that there's not that much difference <laughs> in their religion. And the fact that um, Morton was able to give up the fact that he was upset that the Anne's father didn't have the same religion just because just because of his pride because his his son was turned down really shows you that that he doesn't there's a thin line here when it comes to his religion that he's willing to cross so that coupled with the fact that Anne's father was really bad towards Morton when Morton learned that his daughter was dying really led me to believe that they're going to 
uh, realize that their religions aren't that different from each other, that people in this movie, that people uh, and relationships and love probably should take, uh, take precedence over religion. Um, and I think that that's, I think what one of the things they're trying to say in this movie clearly is that, uh, that religions are similar to each other. I took a world religions class, but I don't, this was probably like 15 years ago. And one thing I remember from that class is that religions aren't really that different from each other at all. Uh, they share so many similarities that, uh, when you have a situation like this, where it's, it's really thin, what separates these two families, uh, it's, you, you have to believe that they're going to overcome this and that it's going to end up fine. And I actually think the ending of the movie was a bit of, of a cop-out. I don't know. I wasn't thrilled with the end of this movie. Um, so apparently Mikkel at the end of the movie has to find religion for some reason. So the only way to do that is to resurrect his wife, uh, which I... Why, why do you need that? Why do you need that part where Johannes resurrects the wife, and he actually kind of proves who he was. Wouldn't this been more of an interesting story if Johannes was just crazy, and, and he just, at the end of the movie, he just realizes that he has no power, and that he actually can't do the things that he says he can do, and then that's it, you know, he, that's his story. He's just, he's just crazy. And Mikkel is, you know, he has his beliefs and the family has their beliefs and they're able to get along and live with each other and Anne and Anders are able to marry each other even though they have different religions. I feel like the end of the movie was supposed to say that uh, they all were able to help co to come together, they were all able to live a cohesive unit and they all were able to love each other because in the end it proved that their religion was real. So <laughs> I don't know, I mean I'm not here to say religion is not real or or fake or real or whatever. I'm just saying that I don't, uh, for me, it didn't work all that much. <laughs> uh, the ending wasn't that great. And I don't understand the sight and sound ranking of putting it at 48. Sure, the cinematography was good in this movie, but I just watched Seven Samurai, which came out the same, what, the same year or a year before this movie. And if you're saying that this movie deserves to be on this list because of its cinematography and then you're I realized Seven Samurai was higher up on the list. It was like 20 on Sight and Sound. But these movies aren't even comparable at all to each other. Um, this movie sure had, had really great cinematography, but I mean, there's plenty of movies in the 50s I think have similar uh, cinematography to this. I didn't think it was anything spectacular. And the sound in this movie wasn't great. So what is the Sight and Sound? What are they looking at when they give it this 48? Uh, I wasn't... I wasn't... Uh, very excited or thrilled by this movie at the end. Now, that being said, I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It still deals with deep concepts. It still makes you think about religion. It still makes you think about certain topics. Um, and towards the end of the movie, it did pick up a little bit. Uh, I felt the acting did get, get a little better, especially Mikkel. I thought Mikkel was a really, uh, whoever played Mikkel in this movie, he did a really good job. Morton became less stoic and he actually showed some emotion, which I thought was really good. Um, and Johannes was just Johannes. So uh, all in all, I didn't, I didn't love this movie, but I didn't hate it. Uh, I, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of 10. Thank you, I hope you have a great day.